I knew I wanted to be a writer when I was very young, about seven years old. Um, but I come from a, a, an immigrant family. My father was Chinese American. My mother was from China. And if you see anything about the immigrant families, you know that security is really important to them. So immediately they said, the arts is not a place to make a living. Uh, and I was encouraged to go into sciences. So that's how I ended up in medical school. But even after I became a doctor, I knew that I was a writer. Combining her love of science and storytelling, Tess Gerritsen began writing medical thrillers. Her book hit the New York Times bestsellers list. Hitting the New York Times list was one of the big moments. And the funny thing is it happened in a rather unusual way. I was on book tour. I was in Cincinnati. I was all by myself. I was depressed. I had just come back from a book signing where two people showed up. And I think only one of them bought the book. <laughs> so um, this was before cell phones, so I, I had no idea what was going on in New York. And I get back to my hotel room, and there are all these messages. And that's when I found out I had hit the New York Times bestseller list for the first time. And I'm by myself. So I went down to the bar, and I just happened to tell the bartender, who was this lovely young woman who was going to law school, and I said, I just hit the list. And she brought out a bottle of champagne, and she said, it's on the house. And so I spent my first night as a New York Times bestseller in my room, drinking champagne and reading the National Enquirer. So that, to the, that was like my celebration. After the success of Bloodstream, Gerritsen got to work writing a thriller that required months of painstaking research. The biggest challenge of my career was a book called Gravity. It was about um, a female astronaut who's trapped aboard the International Space Station when the rest of her crew dies, and she has to find a way to survive. Um, and I remember when my editor said, that sounds like a great idea, write the book. I thought, holy cow, I don't know enough about the space program to, to do this justice. So I spent months and months uh, with NASA, uh, doing a lot of research, and my goal was to write a book where no NASA engineer would find anything wrong. Well, after the book was published, I got this phone call. Um, I don't know his name, but he, he clearly had a Texas accent, and he said, I work here at Johnson Space Center, and I read your book, Gravity, and I hate to tell you this, but you got something wrong. And I said, oh God, what, what was that? And he said, well, in this chapter, you have your hero drive into the Building 30 parking lot and park his car. And I said, yeah, and he goes, I've worked here for 20 years. I've never found an empty space in that lot. So <laughs> he, he really called to say how much, how, how much I got right. Gerritsen's Rizzoli and Isles series is a much beloved fan favorite and also a hit TV series. I've been so surprised since the television show Rizzoli and Isles began that people have their own image of what Jane and Maura look like, their own idea of what their relationship is. I guess the best metaphor I can come up with is that I wrote this original tune and everybody else is coming up with new versions of it. There's a jazz version, there's a rap version, there's a, there's a classical version, but it's all basically Jane Rizzoli and Maura Isles and how they work together. And created Jane Rizzoli, she was a, a secondary character. She walked onto the stage and I thought, I don't like you, I, there's something about you I don't like and I'm gonna kill you before the end of the book. And so I didn't feel I had to make her likable because I thought she's a sacrificial secondary character. Um, but as I was writing the book, things began to be revealed to me. I understood why she was the way she was, why she had a chip on her shoulder. She was the only girl in a family with rough and tumble brothers. Um, she was working in a man's field. She was not attractive. She was always trying to prove herself. And the most important thing about Jane is that she is an outsider. I identify with that so much because I was the only Asian little girl in my elementary school. So by the time the book came to the end where there was a scene where I thought I was going to kill Jane, I thought, you know, you've worked so hard. I know you're not the most likable person, but you don't deserve to die. Um, so she survived. The character closest to me is, is Maura Isles, not because I like her, not because she moves me, but because she's so much like me. I never thought she was going to be a continuing character. And she was brought on as a, just a walk-on. She was supposed to be uh, the new medical examiner in Boston. And as soon as she came on the scene, I thought, I don't know who you are. You're very mysterious. Um, and she stayed mysterious through that book. But by the end, I thought, I want to know more about you. Um, so I wrote another book with her in it. And then things began to be revealed about her. And I realized she's, she's really my alter ego. And so when I need to graft biographical details, like what kind of wine she drinks, what kind of car she drives, 
Um, that's from my own life. Tess Garrison's books certainly move and thrill her legions of fans, but what moves Garrison about her work? When I look back at what, what has, you know, what books did I cry over um, when I was writing them, a lot of them tend to have children in them, a lot of them tend to have um, tragedy in them. Um, you know, I have this theory that if a story ends on a happy note, you, you close the book and you don't really think too much more about it. Um, but if a book, you know, lands on a soft, a sad note or a bittersweet note, it's the way um, grief tends to stay with us longer. We think about that book a lot longer. Happiness is very fleeting, but, but grief can last a long time. And um, I, I want to just sort of touch on that, even if it's just a bittersweet note at the end of a story. Thank you.